Hello, Nuggets. Oh. Hello, Nuggets. Okay, so I uh, haven't been updated for a few uh, days. Got back from London. Uh, it was a great trip. Put my back out, though. Uh, so we went to see the premiere of Frozen 2, which is, I'll do another video on that. It was very cool, lots of things. But it was at the British Film Institute in London, which has like four or five screens, and they, I don't know, it's like official movie business kind of place. You know, they have, uh, they show lots of, uh, classic old movies and independent stuff and it's a great place right the problem is they are the most uncomfortable seats I've ever sat in in my life I mean genuinely it's bizarre that they haven't changed them because I haven't been there for 20 years or so something like that and they were like that 20 years ago the seat is reclined at exactly the wrong angle it feels like you're going into a planetarium right because you're kind of at this weird angle where you're like leaning back like this and the screens here so it, I felt like Neil deGrasse Ty Tyson was going to walk out at any minute and say, the universe, that's <laughs> Carl Sagan. Anyway, but um, it was just weird. So we sat like that for about three hours because there was a little bit of stuff, obviously, before the, the show started and everything. And uh, I just ended up with backache and it was just so uncomfortable. And then I had to get on a flight, you know, like the 11, 10 hour, 11 hour flight back. Um, it was a great flight, you know, we flew business class, so that was awesome. But um, but either way, I put my back out. Anyway, the London trip, I'll do a different video on that. It was great. I wanted to do an update on the pilot. Um, so this is where we're at. I'm still fussing with the script, but it's done. The script can, is getting sent out to whoever it needs to go to now. And then there's a little kind of little changes here and there. But, you know, we've put the budget... Um, we've put pen to paper on the budget. We know how much it's going to cost. It's going to cost about 15, 16,000 which is about as cheap as we can do it. Uh, that would be what's called a SAG short project agreement, uh, which is basically that you don't pay the cast or it's deferred payment. So if it gets picked up, we sell it. If someone likes it, then we can start paying people. Um, we hate doing that because we have to pay the cast and crew. We hate doing that where we have to pay the crew rather. We hate not paying the cast because my wife's an actor. I've been around actors. I know what it's like. Um, but really there's just no other way we can do it um, you know and it's a little different because for crew the reason you pay the crew and we're not paying the cast is the crew are not looking forward to a long project they're not going to suddenly make a lot of money if this gets picked up they'll make exactly the same maybe a little bit more because we'll probably be asking people to work a little cheaper than they normally do but they, they don't really have as much invested interest in this being successful the idea is that the cast on the other hand they're on deferred payment. If it gets picked up, not only do they get paid for the work they did, but hopefully they will get paid and hopefully a lot more if the show gets picked up. So anyway, short project agreement, um, re renting the equipment and the crew and doing everything on the cheap locations, trying to get locations for free or just buying gift cards, stuff like that. We're looking at 15, 16,000. So here's where we're currently at. We know how much it costs. We have most of the cast in place. Um, there's about 24 total cast, plus a few background extra roles. Um, but really, it's only eight of them, eight cast that we absolutely like. We need these people. The rest of them are, have just one or two lines, or they just pop in for a bit and be. So it's really eight, eight people. We have all of those cast. Uh, we've had a really good response. Um, from everyone we've sent it out to has said, yeah, I want to get involved. Today... Um, Laura has a publicity agent that she hires from time to time. Fantastic guy. His name's Charles. He's wonderful. Really, really lovely man. Um, and she said, she talked to him about the project and he said, why don't you send me the script? I'm going to a thing tonight and Jad, Judd Apatow is going to be there. And I will get the script to Judd Apatow. Now, I assume Judd Apatow is a very busy man. He doesn't just read every script. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to do anything else. But there is a role in the script that would be perfect for his wife. And Charles knows his wife, and he's going to read the script, and if he thinks it's right, he's going to hand it on. So fingers crossed, somehow it will get into the hands of someone, not an actor, who, who can do more than just say, I love the script, let's do it, who can actually say, I can help. If not, and I always like to assume the worst, so I always assume that either Judd Apatow won't read the script, or he reads it and he goes, no, nah, that's not what I want to do. Worst case scenario, where we're at right now is we've got to raise money, and we're not totally sure how to do that to be honest with you you know there's the whole family and friends route 
which we could do. We do believe in this. But here's the thing. Whenever you're a writer or an actor or a creator and you have something, you always say, I really believe in this. You know, this time we do. I do think this is genuinely one of the best scripts. It is the best script I've written. Um, and I feel that it's very, very strong. I think it will make a great show. I think I need another writer to help out, somewhat a showrunner, someone who knows how to take things forward, how to move it along correctly. Um, but going the family and friends route, I don't know. It might be what we end up doing. We don't have 16,000 to put into it ourselves. Um, and they always say, don't invest your own money. But I think in this case, we probably would. We just don't have the money. So that's where we're at. We really want to shoot it in January or February. Um, Laura wants to shoot tomorrow. <laughs> it's this great balance. She's always like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I'm, I used to be a stage manager and then I was in games development for many years. So I'm very, a bit more methodical, you know, things go in order, but that's slow. The truth is that's very slow. Laura's, you know, I'm lawful good, she's chaotic good. So she's, she's chaos. She's like, let's go, let's get it done. Let's go right now. Um, so we're trying to find a balance in between. And I think the balance is we're hoping to shoot in January, February. All of that depends on if we get the money. We don't really know how we're going to do it. We've started a GoFundMe page. I haven't sent it out to anyone yet, but we've started a GoFundMe. But I'm worried about that stuff. It worries me because, you know, you're asking, well, like, let's say we need $15,000, right? And let's say we start a GoFundMe and we send it out to family and friends and say, if you want to help out, this would be great. And let's say that we get money. Let's say we get $3,000, just picking a number. Now, what do we do? We can't make it for $3,000. So now we have to go figure out what everyone paid and go give the money back. But we still have to pay GoFundMe, right? And they, it's a very small percentage they take, but the point is we have to pay them. So the second alternative is to go something like uh, Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Well, the problem with Kickstarter and Indiegogo, Indiegogo, particularly Kickstarter, is how many people have been ripped off. So it's got a bit of a bad taste at the moment. At least over here it has. And secondly, they take a big chunk of the money, right? So not, not a big chunk. I don't, I don't want to do them a disservice. It's not massive, but it's more, right? So now our budget might, say, become, well, actually, it's 20000 we need. The advantage to that, though, is that you don't get any of the money unless you hit your goal. So if we do a Kickstarter, then there really isn't that much for us to worry about unless we hit the goal. And if we hit the goal, great, now we can go and make it. A part of me feels that I should close the GoFundMe down. It doesn't, no one's on it because I haven't told anyone about it. Um, it would be funny if I logged onto it and just found someone to give money. But anyway, so I might close that down and instead do the Kickstarter. The other thing is that Kickstarters need a little bit more um, material to, to, you know, a trailer or a sizzle reel or something to kind of engage people with. But I think we would be using Kickstarter mostly to our family and friends and they wouldn't require as much. You know, just the description of the project. They can get script from me if they want to read it and stuff like that. Oh, there is a third way, which is that we just go ask one-on-one. -on -one, just ask people, hey, do you want to put it in? But managing that seems like a nightmare and also very embarrassing, frankly. Um, so I don't know. We're stuck with funding. We don't know what to do. We could just send the script out to people, but then we think, yeah, I'll, you know, let's say someone reads it and says, yeah, I'll put 20 grand in. Let's go, go make a pilot. However... <laughs> I want this director, I want this actor, I want, you know, they're going to start stipulating things, some of which might be good and some of which might be, might be bad. The whole purpose of this is a vehicle for myself and Laura, Laura to star in it and me to write it. So if either of those two things get thrown out with the deal, then it doesn't meet our goal, you know, apart from just being producers, both of us, but we're not as driven by that, you know, we want to create. Anyway, so that's where it's at, still trying to figure out what to do. Um, I don't know. I've got a lot going on. I joined a writer's group. Uh, we're going to read some of a play I wrote tonight. If that goes well, it's a big writer's group. It's called Second Draft Delay. It's really good, by the way. You should join it. It's really good. You can look them up. You'll find them online. Um, but if that goes well, I might try taking in some of the pilot for people to read, for them to read. Uh, TV isn't as great in reading groups because you're reading a lot of stage directions and those are boring. Um, anyway, that's the pilot update. We're hoping to shoot January, February. We're trying to figure out how to raise the money. I just, the other thing is that, you know, Laura's great at this stuff. She's really good at managing and producing that side of it. I hate doing it. So I'm not driven 
to resolve the issue of I don't know how to do this because I just I also don't want to know how to do this. It just is no interest to me whatsoever. Creatively, I'm fascinated. The idea of just talking to people about money and where to get it is just hell for me. So I think I just got to find a way to overcome that. Um, that's it. That's the update. I think I'm going to make some videos about London either now or tomorrow. All right, you little nuggets. Cheerio. Bye.